As energy demand rises and stresses the grid to increasing there with nuclear power, nuclear energy is looking to make a comeback to fill some of that rising supply gap. To discuss one company looking to fill that gap, it's time to spotlight nano nuclear energy. Joining us now is Jay Yu, the executive chairman and president of nano nuclear energy. Jay, thank you for being with us today to discuss this rise in nuclear and more specifically your, com your company. You know, if you wouldn't mind starting by just telling us a little bit about nano nuclear energy. Yeah, thanks for having me. Nano Nuclear Energy is a vertically integrated microreactor company. We're actually leading um, in the U.S. with uh, our microreactor flagship uh, called Kronos MMR, which stands for Modular Microreactor. We're in collaboration with the University of Illinois and on their campus, we'll, we'll be planning to build a microreactor. Uh, you know, we have multiple catalysts coming up in the near future, especially this quarter. We're planning to drill on our land. Uh, so nano is actually coming to life soon, uh, which we're ve very proud of. And we're partnered with AECOM, which is a $16 billion revenue a year company, Fortune 500 company, who plans to drill um, this coming months. And, and at that point, we're planning to submit a construction application with the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission um, in in early Q1. So we're very excited about what's coming up with Nano and leading the microreactor race. And I want to talk specifically about these updates we're getting uh, from the U.S.-U.K. deals and how they're specifically going to impact the nuclear sector. You know, how is that going to change things for Nano and what sort of opportunities does it create? Yeah, so the Trump administration is doing an amazing job right now. Um, so the noise coming from the UK and US is tremendous. Uh, it's basically opening up its borders and advancing civil nuclear energy, especially small modular reactors and micro reactors like, like us. Um, we acquired our Kronos MMR, which uh, I don't think many knew, but the UK actually picked Kronos MMR as the only microreactor that received 50 million pound of funding in, in the UK. So, you know, we're very excited about this relationship and I think it's gonna open up tremendous, I would say technology, uh, fuel advancements, and just in general, energy for the world. And Jay, can you explain for our viewers, you know, exactly what a micro reactor is also in terms of its size and scale? Because I think we talk nuclear and people think those massive nuclear plants that you're used to seeing off in the distance. But this is not that. Oh, no. Correct. Uh, micro reactors are categorized as 20 megawatts or less. Um, our Kronos MMR is 15 megawatt output, 45 megawatt thermal. We believe it's the biggest you can make a reactor or, or a micro reactor while keeping it fully modular. What that means is factory fabricating it and, and truly mass producing nuclear at a, at, at a rate that, you know, the world needs because the growth in AI data centers, the growth in decarbonizing the world, uh, reaching net zero goals. I think that is what is key here and what's driving a lot of interest in our stock and in our company. And I, I see a description in your in your company notes about that it's basically a miniature mobile nuclear power plant in a truck. So it, it, it's a mobile energy capability, but more specifically because of its type, you're also built it for disaster relief situations. You know, how does that work? Because I don't think we ever really highlight that component of nuclear. Yeah, so I think one of the main areas we're looking to disrupt is replacing diesel generators, essentially. So what many of these diesel generators are brought to disaster relief sites. So bringing in carbon-free technology that could help, you know, power these islands that are hit by hurricanes or natural disasters. I think that is key. Uh, for example, in Canada, uh, we're looking to reestablish our demonstration uh, partnership with the with the government out there as well. And they have 300 northern territories that are remote, right? So if they're hit by natural disasters, um, you know, they usually bring in tons of diesel generators. But you know, they're looking to disrupt this with clean energy. So having that up, having that um, opportunity would be huge for, for the world. So looking to disrupt there, but also we have to talk about this data center boon that we're seeing here and these rising energy demands that are that are happening because of that. You know, how has that specifically impacted Nano? Yes, I, I, 
it, it's been huge for us. Uh, it, it's actually a priority at Nano uh, because th there's been tremendous amounts of interest in our Kronos MMR because it can co-locate with data centers and, and provide that base load energy for the future of AI. And, um, you know, we've, we are actively talking to many, um, you know, even the largest tech companies in the world that are building tens of billions of dollars of data centers. Uh, you know, th they know that nuclear needs to be part of their solution. And, you know, Nano with our high technology readiness level Kronos MMR, which is patented, um, not many, reactors are patented, at, you know, in the world. So this is very key for us to kind of unlocking, I would say, the AI, uh, you, you know, energy needed for the future. And a lot of developments for Nano because of that. But one of the headlines that caught my eye when I was researching your company is your recent deal with the U.S. Air Force. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's that's a very important win for us because it's actually the closest joint military base to DC. They assessed our reactor. They have multiple sites on, on their uh, base that, that they have an aging, I would say, uh, grid and energy system. So they're looking to upgrade this and they spend billions of dollars. And, you know, we're going in there to do a feasibility study on multiple sites on their base. But what's more important that uh, this gives us is it gives us a sole source uh, vehicle or contract that Nano now is able to also bid and apply for other military grants as well. So, uh, you know, having that access for the military and, and, and Nano's also comprised of former U.S. national leaders in military, uh, four-star generals like Wesley Clark. Uh, we have the real-life Top Gun. Um, you, you know, we have a vice admiral. And if you think about submarines as well, that's a micro reactor literally in, in there. And that's why you could you could stay submerged below and never come up for air because there's clean, clean air, clean water down there because of a micro reactor. So, Jay, with all of that said and all of these potential avenues for opportunity, where do you see nano fitting into the bigger picture of this rise in nuclear energy? Uh, I think. We, like I said, we are uh, the leader in, in commercializing a micro reactor because we're planning to submit a construction application after we drill this uh, fall. So once we do that, I believe there's, you know, no commercial micro reactor that has submitted that um, construction application. And at that point, also, we're all, we're building another demonstration site in Canada. So it's giving us, I would say, an edge, a competitive edge, where we've become a North American provider of advanced nuclear technologies. So it'll give us, I would say, multiple fronts of commercial licensing, which means multiple fronts of revenue. So I think that is what's going to help us uh, generate more eyeballs and interest in, in the world. Well, Jay, we appreciate you being with us to talk nuclear and also to tell us more about nano. That's Jay Yu, the executive chairman and president of Nano Nuclear Energy.